Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome back to the Renault Premium. It's a truck all of you guys really love. <laughs> Yes, all jokes aside guys, we have four of them here, ranging in age from 2011 up to 2014, all run by Rory Lynch Transport. So of course, the drivers have various complaints about this truck, they have given problems alright, but when you take for instance the guarantee that came with these trucks, which we'll talk about later on, were they actually a very good buy? We'll go down through that in this video. Stay tuned guys, and we'll find out what the Renault Premium is all about. So this particular Renault Premium is from 2011. So after seven years of service with Rory Lynch Transport, it will be soon leaving the fleet. So it's clocked up about 375,000 miles, and it's had its fair amount of problems. I'll go down through them shortly, but yeah, it will be replaced now by another truck soon. So these two trucks, this one and that one, were purchased in 2011 at around 75,000 euro, which was an excellent <laughs> price at its time. Um, Renault back in 2011, they really were slaughtering the market and an awful lot of these premiums were sold in 2011. Because when you look back then, there wasn't a lot of people buying trucks in 2009, 2010. So Renault in 2011 decided, right, we're going to give these trucks at a very good price, and they did. But not only the purchase price was low, but also the guarantee. So they had a four year bumper to bumper warranty on these trucks. So yeah, you can say what you want about the Renault Premium guys. Okay, it's had its problems, but when you take into account the guarantee and the purchase price, this 2011 truck and that one, were a very, very good buy for Rory Lynch Transport in 2011. So also we have one beside us here, 2012, and this one over here is 2014. So yeah, let's just go down through some of the problems. So I have shot a full video of this Renault Premium truck. I took it out on a test drive, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So let's just walk around the truck and show you some of the problems guys okay so it has a volvo engine as you know 460 horsepower and develops 2200 newton meters of torque if you compare it to the p440 scania that i drove the p series that has 2300 newton meters of torque so it's not all about the horsepower figure it's more important the torque figure so yeah less torque in this than the p440 scania Anyway, let's walk around the back here. I'll show you straight away the mudguard. So these mudguards don't stay on properly. They end up falling off and they're not mounted properly with those straps. So yeah, and there's another one missing over there as well on that truck. So the mudguards, that's a problem. Also, this top step. So we have two of them here that are broken. So you'll see it cracked there. They crack and hopping up there and you're foot just ends up moving down a bit on the step so yeah that's cracked and also this one has broken away as well so you'll see it's all moving there on top that's just another problem okay we will <laughs> move around um, and sh I'm just going to open up the grill as well and show you this these cab airbags they give problems so they end up uh, losing air and your cab ends up knocking. You get that awful knocking feeling on the inside of the cab. Also, the starter motor, a little wire on the starter motor corrodes and your truck won't start. So yeah, just a small fault there on the starter motor with wires corroding. And let's just hop inside and talk more uh, about what Drivers don't like about this truck. So uh, this top step seem, seems fine on this one. So it's just a problem on some of them. Uh, the footwell area here, it's very small. Not enough room there to have your feet around. Um, as you know, it has the 12 speed automatic gearbox, the Volvo gearbox, the I shift, and it's known as the Opti driver gearbox from Renault. So, so that is the inside of the cab. Now, a lot of people would <laughs> would like more space, um, but it is okay. 
but uh, yeah, if you were out for weeks on end, I'm sure you would like a bit more space. Now also the pillar is a bit too close to the mirrors. I'd like a bigger gap between them. That's just uh, my problem with it as well. Um, let's just start it up and give you a sound of the engine. Oh, let me just, there we are. And give that Volvo engine a rev. As you know, Volvo do own Renault trucks. So, now one thing you have to be very careful of guys as well is if you have an air leak in this truck and say for instance you leave your truck overnight in D and the truck loses all its air, well then you won't have, you won't be able to start it up in the morning. So be very careful of that if you're driving a Renault Premium and you do have an air leak, don't leave it in the D position overnight because you won't be able to start it in the morning. So always keep it in the neutral position if you have an air leak. So that's just another problem. And one driver did complain about the gear selector, right? When you have it in D and he put it forward, he found himself in reverse. <laughs> and it happened him the opposite way as well. He put it into D, put it into reverse, and he was in forward. <laughs> so yeah, just um, a bit of a problem there for one of the drivers. Um, putting into into drive and he found himself in reverse so yeah he's very cautious now <laughs> anytime he puts it into drive that he doesn't end up in reverse so yeah what other other complaints do they have um the motors uh front anti-roll bars as well give problems on these yeah your front anti-roll bar and also getting locked out of the cab now this is has been a problem for numerous drivers where they would just lean on that slightly, right? So you would you would hop out, okay? You'd hop out and then see the latch there? Even if you had it half pressed down and you hop out and you slam the door, all of a sudden that would flick down and you'd find yourself locked out of the truck. So yeah, it has been a problem for numerous drivers getting locked out of the Renault Premium. Yeah, so uh, that's not something you want to ever happen you, getting locked out of this truck. Okay, during the last video of this truck I shot, I asked you guys to send in your comments, have some of you driven it before, and some of you have. So thanks for sending in your comments. I'm going to read the, some of them now. Um, one comes in here from a YouTube channel. He says, I think it's okay for local deliveries, but it could be annoying for long routes. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of comfort equipment like Scania, Volvo, or Actress, and New DAF. So thanks for sending that comment in. Moving on to Stephen Trundle, he says, I had a Renault Premium, it pulled okay. Uh, they aren't bad for day drivers, but I wouldn't like to tramp in it, meaning overnighting for long periods of time. Uh, moving on to this one, Trucker Dashcam says, Nice review, ugly truck. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, moving on to Sean Moore, he says, Stavros, uh, thank you again for a great video. The Renault Premium I drove was back in the late 1990s. It had the softest bunk um, of any wagon I used, overslept a few times. Uh, now, the bad thing I disliked was the steps to the catwalk were on the near side curb, um, like on yours, but all the other trucks I had driven were on the off side on the driver's side. I was forever smacking my leg, my legs and once or twice twisted back and knees going for non-existent steps. Um, not good when you're changing three to four trailers in a night, um, yeah, on night trunks. Yeah, you don't want to be smacking your legs uh, during the middle of the night. Uh, you, you're going to have a bad night. <laughs> So anyway, moving on to Windows 10, he says, a Renault, huh? I hate those damn trucks. <laughs> yeah, so uh, hmm. that's just his opinion, guys. <laughs> okay, so over the past few days, Ireland has been experiencing an awful lot of snow, guys. Yeah, we've been getting it very, very bad, and a lot of places have been closed down, um, very hard to get around, <laughs> and 
yeah so I just want to show you some of the footage I shot with the drone and going around getting shots of snowmen all around my local area check this out So moving on to a totally different subject now guys, I want to talk about the all new Jaguar I-PACE which was launched last Thursday the 1st of March 2018. So this is Jaguar's all new electric SUV, the I-PACE. So first of all let's start off with the exterior styling. I think it looks very very well, certainly far nicer than any Tesla. And remember guys, I'm not a Tesla hater. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on to the figures. First of all, it develops 400 PS, which is 394 brake horsepower, and it has 700 newton meters of torque. So it's certainly not lacking in power. And it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers in 4.8 seconds. So it has a 90 kilowatt lithium ion battery pack. And Jaguar claims that it has a range of about 480 kilometers, which is around 300 miles. So uh, realistically, you can expect a figure below 300 miles. So that's not bad on a fully charged SUV from Jaguar. And the boot space is quite good as well. It has a 656 liter boot space capacity. So that is quite good on this SUV. And it has a drag coefficient figure of 0.29. So that's very similar to BMW's X3, that drag coefficient figure of 0.29. So that's a good figure to have for an SUV. We have that very nice looking Touch Pro Duo infotainment system on the interior. I really do like the interior, I, uh, the design of the dashboard. They've done a fantastic job. So yeah, that's how the new iPace looks. And I think it really will be a good seller for Jaguar. It's still a bit expensive, but it's a lot cheaper than a lot of the Tesla models out there. Um, so a starting price of around £63,000 going up to well into the 70s. So that's the way it's priced at the moment for your Jaguar I-Pace. But I just thought I'd give it a mention because it is in the news at the moment and I would really like to drive it. But who knows if that will ever happen. Okay, guys. <laughs> so there we have it, the Renault Premium Truck. So I do hope you enjoyed the video guys, looking at the Renault Premium. All in all, it has not been a bad truck for Rory Lynch Transport. When you consider the purchase price of that 2011 and the one behind for 75,000 euro back in 2011, it really was an excellent price. And of course the guarantee, four years as well. So that was just a look at some of the problems that the trucks give but no truck is ever going to be 100% reliable. And we do have water pump problems as well, where they're leaking water. And that can be common in a lot of trucks as well, leaking water pumps. So yeah, that is the Renault Premium. Now, of course, the new T-cabs, the Renault T-Series, you're talking about 92,000 euro for a new T-Series Renault truck. So they have gone up hugely in price as well. And they won't have that four year warranty as well. I think that's going down to three years. So be sure and check your Renault dealer for that warranty on the new T-Series. But that's it guys. Just a quick chat about the Jaguar I-Pace as well. Really like that all electric SUV. And that's where I'm going to leave you all today. 
for this week's video and I'll talk to you all again next weekend for another video. Until then, take care and thanks for watching guys. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs>